Hi, I'm Hilke, and welcome to my World Machine tutorial series. In this video, we will take a look at the Flow Restructure device, which can be found in the Filter tab. The Flow Restructure device is a highly specialized device and designed almost specifically for one use case only, namely making your terrain compatible with the Create Water device in order to create natural flowing rivers. It is also possible to use the Flow Restructure device for other purposes, but since the main focus is to combine it with the Create Water device, I will focus on that use case only in this episode. But what does it do? It all has to do with water and how the Create Water device spawned water in the terrain. When you create a terrain, it will have a lot of pits and crevices, which Create Water will fill, resulting in a countless number of puddles, as you can see here. To fix this, we add a flow restructure device which takes your terrain and edits it to make sure water can always flow downwards and out of the map. The puddles will disappear and your rivers will look clean again. It is best practice to put the flow restructure device always directly in front of the create water device to ensure no artifacts arise. First, let's take a look at the properties and then the ports. We see just two parameters, being the rich carving slider and drain to enumeration. When toggling the advanced settings, we get access to the basin, restructuring and operation parameters. We begin with the rich carving parameter. It is an important shape defining parameter, as the slider determines how aggressive flow restructure can carve the path for rivers. By default, it is set to 1, and flow restructure will alter your terrain as you can see, and you see valley-like features appear. You now may think that by setting it to zero, it will leave your terrain mostly untouched. Instead, to prevent the carving paths, flow restrict will now fill up and elevate your terrain to ensure water can flow properly, and thus still alters your terrain. As a matter of fact, flow restructure will always have some sort of impact on your terrain's shape, and I think the default setting is best suited for most use cases. The basin restructuring parameter lets you determine the minimum angle of the water slope. The default zero will not alter your terrain, but when increasing it, we see flow restructure starts to add mountain-like shapes to the terrain. That is because, to ensure the water will follow a certain slope, the device must add terrain in order to create a sufficient height difference. The slider goes all the way up to 60 degrees, but as you can see, at this setting the terrain starts to look really artificial and unnatural. The behavior of this parameter also heavily depends on the operations method. The operation enumeration lets you choose between restructure, which will only add hydrologically correct terrain surface for the water to flow down, and synthesize on the other hand will create additional terrain from scratch as well. That is a mouthful and it's probably better explained when comparing the two methods. So we add another flow restructure device, but now set its operation method to synthesize instead. When using the synthesize method, flow restructure will just add terrain, whereas the restructure method will try to only add terrain if it makes sense. This is why the synthesize method adds a lot more terrain than the restructure method. The synthesize method is a beautiful way to give your terrain some classic mountain shape, but again, it looks artificial. As a last note, the experimental addition to the synthesize operation is a warning that this method is still under development and its behavior may change in future versions of World Machine. An important parameter we skipped is the drain2 parameter, which is an enumeration of several draining methods. By default, it is set to map borders and drainage mask only, and in this mode, the water will drain to existing water bodies and to the edge of the map, just like the first example. When set to drainage mask, the water will, when a water body is connected, drain to the water body only, and not to the edge of the map. World Machine even ensures that the water cannot drain out of your map, which can create strange artifacts near the edge. I've made an example with a lake, and as you can see, the water now drains to both the lake and the edge of the map. When we set the mode to drainage mask, flow restructure will lift all the terrain with a lower elevation than the lake to ensure all the water on the map drains into that lake. The final option, map borders along drainage mask, will ensure that water drains to the edge of the map, but only if the drainage mask intersects with the map's border. This gives you a tight control over where water will flow out of your map. Right now I do not have a water body near the edge of the map, so we won't see any change, 
when we go to that mode. But the drain 2 parameter will be useless if it wasn't possible to add a water body to the flow restructure device. The drainage input is exactly for that, and as you can see, its type is water, meaning you can only add a water system to the input. In this example, I use the quick lake macro to create some lakes, and the macro not only outputs the altered terrain, but also the lake's water as a water system. That water system is then connected to the drainage input of the flow restructure device to make sure the device knows of the lakes and will drain water to it. Finally, it is also connected to the created water device and the result is this terrain with lakes and rivers. The synthesis guide lets you determine where flow restructure's basin restructuring parameter will add terrain and where not. When we connect a gradient to the input and set its width to 0 meters, we see a distinct difference between the left side and the right side of the terrain. When, for example, you hook up a shapes device to this guide, you can have a tight control over where flow restructure creates terrain. And that's about it for the flow restructure device. Just talking about the device's parameters doesn't really show what it's capable of, and we will use it a lot in future episodes, as there are many use cases that are just out of scope for this overview. For now, it is important to remember this one simple rule. Use the flow restructure device directly before the create water device. You can always deviate from this rule, but keep in mind that you may get artifacts. I hope you've learned something from this episode. See ya!